What's up, guys? Bad Sniper back again with another Pokemon Sword and Shield Season 5. I believe we're in ranked doubles battle. So we're using the same team as last week with very minimal changes. Again, we have the rental code in the description below. Uh, with that being said, let's just check out the team for those of you that missed it. So, team number two over here, and we have pretty typical for the most part, Reptar, Tyranitar coming in as a big MVP in a lot of the games for this team with the weakness policy. Always nice to pair up with the Tyranitar is the Excadrill with the Sand Rush. Gudra coming in with Sap Sipper, which is really good in the meta right now because of all of the Rillabooms that are going around being immune. Those grass attacks is really important. You get a lot of really nice switching opportunities because of that. After that, we have one of the secret MVPs of the team in a Pokemon I was really excited coming back into the meta with the DLC. The whole reason we built this team, the Comfey. Triage, an absolutely amazing support ability that gets really, really undervalued. Giga Drain giving you plus three priority, which means you can activate your Sap Surfer. You can activate your weakness policy on Tyrantar. And the cool thing is, they can't stop you. Uh, because triage is plus three priority, the same priority as fake out, as long as you're faster than the fake out user, you'll actually activate your triage before they can fake you out. Now we specifically have specced speed into our comfang to be faster than max speed. Rillaboom, which is the current fastest actively used fake out user in the format. Raichu can still fake you out, but you're probably not going for this play if your opponent has a Raichu, and that's also assuming their max speed on the Raichu. But really cool, uh, we have the Baviri Berry because sometimes you also want to set up Trick Room and there's a lot of Steel Spike going around with those max forms. So you got to make sure we live those. After that, typical, everybody's got Togekiss nowadays. Not only has Togekiss been one of the best Pokemon in the format since Sword and Shield has come out, it's actually gotten better now thanks to all of the Rillabooms coming around and Togekiss having a really nice matchup against the Rillaboom. And to round the team out, we have the Rotom. Common in clutch in a lot of situations. The Willowis, Citrus Berry, Throwback, Billy Mays here with a special TV offer. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into these games and uh, see how the team performs today in our second and final video with this team. All right, here we go. Jumping into game number one, and our opponent has a pretty cool team. We have the Raichu Pinchurchin combo that has been going around lately. Amoongus definitely worries me. Uh, Duraliodon's always a fun time. Cinderance and uh, Primarina. Um, there's a couple of options here. I do want to get Electric Terrain down with Tyranitar. Or... I mean, I technically... The... the Misty Terrain would also work for the Grounded, but Tyranitar isn't affected by that. So I feel like Comfey Tyranitar is fine. If they lead with the Raichu or with the Cinerates, we just immediately want to get Trick Room set up. Um, and that would make his Amoongus powerful. However, if we get the Electric Terrain set up, we're fine there. I don't mind Togekiss in the back. Togekiss is a pretty good matchup against the Duraliodon despite it being super effective. I think Rotom's pretty good here too, actually. So we'll go with this. Uh, I don't really love Excadrill. Oh, it's not bad here. We'll go with this, because I, I want to set up the Trick Room, so I don't know if I want that fast option in the back. Unless I really uh, do a good job of stalling out the Trick Room of myself, but I feel like if we get into that situation, we're already in a bad spot. Do we have like a general idea when that cross platform comes out? Like I've, I've been waiting for that forever, I guess. All right, here we go. Primarina Amoongus. And I think this is honestly like, this is like best case scenario for us, right? Primarina can't KO the Comfey. Um, and Tyranitar setting up electric terrain is going to stop him from being able to put us to sleep. So we're going to go for a max lightning here. I'm going to click on Primarina, because there's no reason not to, but I really expect Amoongus to Rage Powder us and not let us do that. Although, Amoongus could also go for the Spore. Uh, and then we're just going to set up Trick Room with Comfy. Definitely want to get this Electric Terrain up as quickly as possible, which really hinders the Amoongus' ability. 
turn two, we're going to set up our weakness policy, so we'll be able to pick up a KO on either of those Pokemon. And let's see what we got. So the, the Among Us, I'm assuming, is either Rage Powder or it's Spore. He's going for a max of his own. That's got to be Primarina, right? Uh, so interesting play here. Is he just going to try and Oko straight up the Tyranitar? I don't think he can do that. But let's see what he goes for. So it is a Rage Powder. That's fine. Kind of what I expected, but... Max Lightning's still gonna make it. So we're in an okay position with the spores that would have been coming up. We are faster than his Primarina as well is something that we see. Max Geyser is gonna get rid of my sand. Really nice chunk of damage since a Tyranitar. So, our weakness policy is set up now by them. Uh, we do need to do a couple of fun things here that we do have to worry about. This Primarina is now faster than us because it was slower than us. Uh, I think we go Max Darkness into the Amoongus. And I think the play here is to Ally Switch. Um, we'll try one Ally Switch and then Floral Healing next turn. Right? I think those are the, the, the best case scenarios. I guess the like the the losing situation here is our opponent predicts the ally switch that's the worst case scenario other than that i think we're fine so rage powder we expect it anyway max geyser did you predict ally switch is the question you did not okay um Faye does get one hit ko'd from that which is really unfortunate but uh, we should pick up the one hit ko with max darkness here which we do. Perfect. All right, and now we get to bring in Togekiss. Uh, and lowering the Primarina special defense is nice. So right here, we bring in our Togekiss, and we're just going to click Follow Me, Max Lightning. In Electric Terrain, plus two special, uh, uh, plus two attack, thanks to the weakness policy. Should be an outcome onto his Primarina. We'll see what his Pokemon he brings in is. Doraluda. Uh, Duraludon's definitely an issue. For the Togekiss. So Togekiss is going to go down this turn, right? Um, I don't think there's anything I can do about that. But we're still going to click Follow Me. And we're still going to click Max Light. Uh, I assume Duraludon just KOs the Togekiss. Uh, like if they double into it, it's just a KO. Technically, Duraludon could go around that. But I don't mind if they do. It does so much damage. I'm actually surprised that one shot. Alright, so let's see what we get here. We do get the one hit KO. So we're two for two because I don't expect his Duraludon to insta KO our Tyranitar. Flash cannon. Yep, yeah, it doesn't get the KO. So our Dynamax is down. We're both down two Pokemon. We bring in the Rotom, who is pretty okay here. Depending on what our opponent has, so it's a center. It's in the back. We do still have Trick Room up, so we're gonna be able to get some good damage there. I don't believe where we're at. Dude, we're not in Sucker Punch range, so. I think we Hydro Pump and hope it hits, right? And then, I think we just crunch and get rid of the Duraludon. We'll see what our opponent does here. Uh, we should be slower with both of our Pokemon. Like, if Cinderin's, uh tries to KO the Tyranitar, he's got to do something like a high jump kick, right? Uh, we are not in range of being Sucker Punched. He does go for the Sucker Punch, which means we won't one-hit KO him. But that's not going to KO us. So Crunch is going to Oko the Duraludon. Plus two Crunch. It does not Oko Duraludon. Okay, I'm actually surprised that didn't do that. That could be bad. 
I don't think it matters. Uh, critical hit there. Okay, so looks like we're fun. Uh, I'm not sure if the crit mattered there. I would have to do the calc. Flash cannon will pick up a KO. That's fine. But he's so low that Rotom's just going to pick up the counter KO here. So if he has, like this is the last turn of Trick Room. If he has Protect, he goes for Protect here. We'll find out. A lot of them just run um, Assault Vest. Yeah, all right. So he's probably Assault Vested. He doesn't go for the Protect, we get the win. Game number one, Rotom picks up two clean KOs at the end. They're a really nice critical hit, but uh, again, I'm not sure if that mattered. Cinderance, while a very powerful Pokemon, is not the most bulky. I would like to see uh, if it gives us the option. Yes, okay. So I figured that it was, okay, it's exactly what I thought. It was Assault Vest. Snarl, interesting. Magnet, I don't know if I like Magnet on Raichu. All right, basically what we expected. Um, with that being said, let's head into game number two and see what we get there. All right, here we go. Game number two against Ernesto and is a very trick room heavy team. Very trick room heavy. Um, so I feel like Tomfei, Tyranitar, again, the same exact lead seems okay to me. We do know that we can pick up a one hit KO on Primarina with a stabbed uh, a plus two max thunder. Uh, we can reverse trick rooms with our Comfey, assuming our opponent falls for that. Technically, they could really just blow the game out turn one if they play around that. Rotom has a pretty good matchup against the Tyranitar and against the Marowak, so I like Rotom here on the back. It also hits the Primarina, and that's pretty much all their damage threats. I think we just go with the same four. I don't love the Gudra against a couple of them, and the Togekiss' follow me could be really helpful. Although the Togekiss does lose to the Tyranitar, which is a little bit potentially worrisome. But we're gonna go uh, for this anyway. Well, that's up, Brian. Hey, how'd you know, Russ? Uh, so there's actually no bot on on Facebook. The bot only connects to uh, Twitter, uh, Twitch Twitter, or Mixer. Rip. All right, heading into game number two. Let's see what we got. Hey, Brian, thank you so much for the follow. All right, so our opponent leads with essentially the same thing that our last opponent, well, a very similar situation to our last opponent, right? Um, attack, attack, attack. Yeah, there we go. Plus attack on the Porygon too, so that's not really too useful. Um, all right, so we have, an, uh, we have a decision to make here. I don't want Trick Room up, but I think our opponent goes for Trick Room, right? Porygon almost always goes for Trick Room on turn one. So I'm going to Trick Room in order to reverse his Trick Room, and then we're going to go for a Max Lightning into the Primarina. And let's see if we can predict our opponent going for Trick Room. If this does not... Like, if our opponent doesn't go for Trick Room, we're not in a great spot. Um, but I really think when you when you bring a Porygon out, you're hard selling that Trick Room option. So let's see what happens here. Does our opponent max is also the question. He does not max. All right. And we pick up the big one hit KO. Free Marina is out of here and we get the electric terrain set up. I didn't see any sleepy Pokemon boys on our opponent's team, but that's still fine. So let's see if the Porygon goes next. The Porygon is going for Trick Room. So beautiful play from the Comfey coming out, reversing our opponent's Trick Room. And Porygon 2 on my opponent's team, thank you so much for bringing the dimensions back to normal. Honestly, such a swell Porygon right there. You know, you just you just love to see it. Real team player, real team player. All right. So let's see our, what our opponent brings in. 
Uh, when he's going for a Trick Room on that turn number one, I assume that Marowak is somewhere in the back. Indeed, he comes out. Probably going to be doing the same thing. It's going to go follow me, try and set up Trick Room yet again. And we have some decisions here to make now. Does our opponent try to Trick Room again? I think he's already seen me Trick Room. He might not do this again. I'm actually going to just activate my Tyranitar's Weakness Policy and one-hit KO this Indeedee. Oh, big protect by our opponent. I don't know if we I don't know if we one hit KO through protect. But even if he does set up Trick Room, he has nothing threatening on his board right now that's gonna stop my Comfey from just reversing it again next turn. So this is the safest play. We get our plus two onto Tyranitar, and we potentially pick up a big KO onto the Indeedee. I actually don't want to KO it, which we don't, which is perfect. So it might sound weird that we didn't want to KO. But the reason here um, is now if his Oregon sets up Trick Room, because we weren't going for the stop, which he does, now he doesn't have an answer to us, right? So now he has nothing on the field that can actually stop my Comfey from reversing his Trick Room, whereas if we did pick up the KO onto Ndidi, there is the chance that he brings in a Pokemon that immediately threatens the Comfey from stopping the Trick Room. So we're going to go for Trick Room here. And we're going to click Max Darkness into Porygon, but I do expect the Ndidi to set up the follow me. There's no reason... Um, oh, he does not follow me. Okay. They're just going to try and double into the Comfey and stop me from setting up Trick Room, maybe? Plus two Max Darkness into Porygon. Lives with a sliver of health. However, that's fine, because we're going to get the KO on him next turn before he can do anything, thanks to the triage ability from Comfey. Expanding Force comes out. Tyranitar does not care about that. Confei is going to take a lot, but it doesn't take a KO. Trick Room is going to go up, fixing the dimensions. Thank you very much. And here comes the huge part of Confei. We're going to pick up a, a double KO here by doing... Oh, oh, never mind. Porygon goes down anyway. All right, so that's a really solid turn for us. He's going to have to bring in his Marowak, which I assume is the Pokemon in the back now. It's Hat, not Marowak. Okay, so that's even better because we have a beautiful matchup for the Tyranitar here. So Hat's definitely going to be his, uh, his Trick Room Pokemon, right? Okay, so the question here that is on my mind, does Giga Drain KO and Didi at this range, right? Uh, I've never done this one, so I'm actually not sure. What is it, like 20, 25% health? I think it'll be really close. I think it's worth checking for the future. Um, so let's see what we got. I think it's worth checking for the future. Um, obviously the hat's going to go for a max here. Either way, that like the NDD is going to get KO'd this turn. It's just, does it stop me from putting some pressure onto the hat? And we also have to see, like, Hatterene has a lot of coverage, so it can hit Tyranitar very hard. Um, probably max. Oh, Psychic Terrain is up. I'm great at this game. <laughs> I forgot about that. Does pick up the KO. We're going to go next. So it actually doesn't go for the follow me. So that's fine. Because we actually didn't care about. Oh, beautiful damage there. Um, We actually didn't care about that. Smite. Does smite KO? Yes, it does. Okay. That's honestly fine, though. With a, a really good damage out there. And it is. Life Orb Pat. So that's probably why it KO'd. I think it would have. Barely, if it was not. So we get to bring in Rotom and Togekiss, both of which are faster than my opponent's Pokemon. And our opponent's Pokemon are both pretty low health. We do have to worry about... Uh, I don't think we can KO them both this turn. I don't know if my Togekiss or my Rotom is faster. We're going to assume... Actually, I can check this. What am I doing? Why am I... Alright, 
143, 106. Okay, perfect. So the play here is Dazzling Gleam and then Lightning Bolt into the Hatterene. So the Follow Me doesn't matter because the Dazzling Gleam is going to pick up the KO because we're faster. And then we get the Lightning Bolt into the Hatterene. We also pick up the crit, double crit. Yeah, yeah. And let's see if we pick up the Thunderbolt's KO. Technically, there is one loss option here. Never mind, doesn't matter. We hit the double KO there on that turn. Beautiful play. Uh, really nice plays from the Confe in the start, helping us get us out of the Trick Room scenario, despite our opponent's best efforts. So Confe, probably the MVP yet again of this game. And good start to the games. And uh, let's head into game number three and see what happens there. Here we go, jumping into another game. Got a lot of sun elements on our opponent's team. We definitely want to leave Confe. Um. Maybe Confe, Tyranitar, Gudra in the back to stop the like a good matchup against the Venusaur for sure. And Ogekus has a pretty nice matchup there. At least a uh, salvageable one. Rotom has a really bad matchup against that. Okay, this is so there's a couple of plays here. That we can go for depending on what our opponent leads. I'm expecting some combination of Venusaur plus Dusclops. I, I feel like Venusaur Dusclops is the play. And Cinnaroar Dusclops. Okay, so that's actually even. That's even better, right? Like, we have the perfect lead for this. Um, so here's the play. I'm going to give you a turn-by-turn turn play. Incineroar fakes out Comfe. Comfe Giga Drains into Tyranitar. Tyranitar Max Darknesses into Dusclops. Dusclops gets KO'd, but it would have done Trick Room. I, I, I want to believe that's the play here. Let's see if we are correct. Alternatively, the the Incineroar could go for a parting shot, um, but the Dusclops still gets KO'd, so that's fine with me. Unless for some strange reason, this is the one Dusclops I've ever seen with Protect. Confe Giga Drains sets off the Tyranitar's weakness policy. So far, so good. We're at plus one attack because we are at minus one. We were at minus one thanks to the... Ally switch. Okay. Good play. Still plus one attack. This is going to do a nice chunk. Yeah, 50% damage to the Incineroar is pretty good. And a minus special defense on both of them, which is relevant for the late game as we do have some special attackers on the team. Close combat into the Tyranitar does a lot of damage. Um, but that's fine. Like, that that hurts turn number one, right? But that's not the end of it. Um, so turn number two. We're just gonna Floral Healing our Tyranitar. Get him back up to a nice health. Do we trade Dusclops for Tyranitar? So that did... 300 damage. Right? 196. 194 damage? I don't, I don't math. Alright, we're gonna go for the same play. But we're gonna heal our Tyranitar. I don't know how much Floral Healing actually heals. We want over 300, we do not get over 300. Alright. So we're gonna KO the Dusclops, but our Tyranitar is probably gone. However, his, his Incineroar will now be at minus 2. Defense, uh, minus th 4 special defense, right? So Comfe can insta-KO that next turn. Yeah. Uh, 
not the best use of Max. Our opponent played that pretty well. Just avoiding ours. We tried to go for the heal, but it, we didn't heal enough off that. In comparison to what I thought we could have healed for. Uh, I think we just bring out the Gujar here. Our opponent's going to bring out their Max Pokemon, probably. Welcome back. Venusaur. Yeah, this is fine. We got a pretty good matchup here. Um, let's get into the Gudra. And then a plus one fire punch into the Venusaur. Like Venusaur wants to go for its max, right? Oh, it's not G Max Venusaur, it's regular Venusaur. Hey, he can't think it's a regular video like. It's not G Max Venusaur. That's actually really interesting. And curious. I feel like Um you know, the Max Venusaur is so much better. Max Ooze. We do have Oh, it's going into Kampai, that's fine. Kampai actually lives that. Kampai is a beast. It's gonna die to the uh, sand, but that's fine. Fire Punch does do 50% damage. Darkest Lariat. Shouldn't do too much damage here. That does a lot more damage than I expected. That's gotta be like full offensive Incineroar. Alright, interesting. Usually get support in Cinera, so we definitely played around that poorly, I would say. Expecting a, a more often uh more supportive in Cinera. Depending on what our opponent goes for. We do KO the Incineroar. It's gonna depend on what our opponent does here. I'm assuming a max use into the Togekiss, which probably KOs. Yes, it does. We do pick up the counter KO. And then we get a 1v1 in the back. But our Gudra's taken a good chunk of damage already. I guess it depends on what our opponent... Uh, it depends on what our opponent has here in the back, right? As their fourth Pokemon. That Darkest Larry did way more damage than I expected it to, which is unfortunate. Yeah, we're only at 60 in health. It's not ideal. Unless it's like a supportive Pokemon, Torkoal. Um. I mean, maybe? Let's go for an Outrage. This isn't going to KO, but it does a lot. He can't, like, how much does Heat Wave do to us? It's not very effective. We do have an Assault Vest. Oh, we get burned! What are the odds? Oh, I don't know if we KO through burn now. Oh, dude. What are the odds of that? That's so unfortunate. Good protect by our opponent. I guess we're gonna find out. We might even just get KO'd to confusion, so. Alright, does it with the burn. Oh, the burn was so clutch there for our opponent. Wait, he missed! The burn's gonna KO's though. Oh! Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter because he could protect. Our opponent has protect. We're gonna lose because of the burn. Good play. Oh, we're gonna lose because of the burn. Was that thirty percent? I don't even know. Heat wave burn chance is a ten percent chance of burning. Oh, I lost with a ten percent chance. 
We were actually in a position to win that game. Unfortunate. But good game by our opponent. They played to their out. They got that 10% burn chance, which ended up being the difference as he barely lived that. Um, unfortunate, but let's head into game number four. All right, jumping into game four. Super, well, the, the, the Thievel is very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen somebody use Thievel before. Uh, this seems like a real big Tyranitar Confe lead again. I think I've, I feel like I've led that every game, but it just looks really nice here. Tyranitar is a great matchup against the Amoongus, thanks to the Max Lightning. It's got a good matchup against the Ndidi. Uh, it can KO the Marowak depending on speed breaks with Max Darkness. The Azumarill is a little unfortunate, um, but I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, let's Togekiss for re redirection and for the matchup against the Amoongus. What I want is the fourth Pokemon. I think Rotom here. Rotom hits the Marowak, hits the Azumarill. And one of those two is going to be his, his max, right? I don't think you ever max Ndidi, Orgon, or Amoongus. And I honestly don't know what Thievil does. So Rotom has a good matchup against his two biggest threats. Uh, so let's go with these four. That's a real unfortunate last game still. Uh, the burn, man. The 10% burn. Oh, he's got the, the chairman's uh, haircut. That one's pretty cool. A 10% burn. All right, let's see what we got. Our opponent is starting with Evil and Ndidi. So, again. I literally have no idea. What Thievil does. <laughs> it's got raised special defense. Uh, I have to assume unburden, right? I know it gets unburden and it just consumed its held item. So I think we go for a crunch onto the Ndidi and set up a trick room. Because I'm assuming he's unburdened, so he's going to be really fast now. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, I know he gets dark coverage. Probably electric. I don't think he gets fighting, right? So I'm not crazy afraid. He goes for a protect. Burning jealousy. Sure. We didn't raise our stats, so that shouldn't burn. And we set up trick room now. So I think he was trying to catch me raising the stats of my Tyranitar. Right? So so my opponent's thought process was I was going to Giga Drain my Tyranitar to set my weakness po policy up to then Burning Jealousy burns the Tyranitar. I actually don't have a great play here from the Pomfei, so I guess we just put some damage onto the evil. Again, I don't know what Thievil does. Protected by Psychic Terrain. Yeah, like, I can't do priority attacks with the Confei right now. I guess we could have ally switched, but I'm not really... Like, I know that one hit KOs. And I don't think I'm afraid of anything that the Thievil's gonna do. I'm not afraid of what the Thievil's gonna do. Confirmed. I can confirm that now. Again, I don't want to raise my stats because now I know he has Burning Jealousy. Um, it's Max Lightning into the Azumarill. And Ally Switch. Here's a play that our opponent can make. Aqua Jets into my Tyranitar. He can't Aqua Jet now because he just maxed. Okay, never mind. Well, he is slow now, so he's faster than me because Azumarill's normally pretty slow. 
but he just gets some aqua jets, so. Um, we are going to change the terrain, which is really important, too, to set our convey up. I assume our weakness policy is going to be procced by our opponent. Uh, let's see. Like, uh, a really cool play he can do is proc my weakness policy, and then, because he expects a weakness policy, the burning jealousy comes out. However, it does let my Comfey live. And if he if he procs my weakness policy, I'm pretty sure I'm going to one-hit KO his Azumarill. So, let's see. Max Steel Spike. Lamau. Suck it! It would have actually uh, parked my weakness policy. Alright. He's gonna get plus defense on both of his Pokemon, which is annoying, but we do protect our Tyranitars from some damage. Fortunately, still faints. If we would have ally switched the last turn, we would have been in a really nice spot. Max Lightning is gonna change up the terrain. And it's gonna do a nice little chunk of damage. Not too much at plus one defense. As long as it's not weak, it's policy, that's fine. Which... Okay, it's not. And then Burning Jealousy, again, that does not. And we didn't raise our stats, so it doesn't hurt us. So let's bring in Togekiss. And we have a couple of options here. I can go for the KO onto the Thievel, or I can draw in the attack. I think we go for some damage onto the Thievel. And I'm gonna just... Yeah, I think we just go for another Max Lightning. Because now we're in terrain, so we'll do even more damage with it. Steel Spike's gonna come out. It's gonna do a lot of damage. Yeah, that's fine. Plus two defense. Like, the Thievel's doing nothing, but the Azumarill's doing a lot of work with his max moves, whereas... Our max moves haven't done too much work. Do we get the KO? We do, thanks to the electric terrain. And it's a crit. Um, I'm not sure if the crit mattered. It might have. Again, the burning jealousy is adorable. Like, super, super cute burning jealousy. And confirm. Oregon 2 comes out as his last Pokemon, which actually has zero offensive pressure, right? Um, so we're in a really nice spot here. So, let's go to our Thunderbolt onto the Evil. And a Max Darkness onto the Oregon. So the reason we go for the Max Darkness, it's going to lower his special defense of both Pokemon. So even if by some chance he gets a KO onto the Tyranitar here, which I don't think either of those Pokemon can do at this point, he can burn with Tri-Attack, right? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> Freezes, are you s All right. Uh, we do get the, the minus special defense onto his Pokemon, which is relevant in the late game. Oh, he thaws out. What a goat. Rotom the goat. Billy Mays coming with the special TV offer. Hitting some nice damage onto the evil. Snarl's coming out. Lowering our uh, special attack on the Rotom. Doesn't really matter for the Tyranitar. Sandstorm is gone. So our special defense increase on Tyranitar is also gone. And we're back to normal dimensions. Which means... Uh... That the Thievil is now the fastest Pokemon on the board, and the Tyran uh the Rotom should be the second fastest, the Tyranitar is the third fastest. So another Thunderbolt. This time we're gonna throw it into Porygon. And we're just gonna rock slide. Pretty content, um with if we KO the Oregon, we win the game, right? Because Thievil has shown Burning Jealousy, which does nothing. Psychic, which does nothing to Rotom. Um, he's shown Snarl, 
And he hasn't shown us our full move yet. But Thunderbolt in the electric terrain. And then going for a rock slide, which in a perfect world gets us a flinch. It does not. So, yeah, we can just go for the same exact play. As long as the Rock Slide hits, it's a double KO. I don't think the Evil can do anything to really stop us. We are at minus two special attack now on Rotom. So our damage is pretty neutered, but in the electric terrain, this is still do a little bit of a chunk. Yeet. And then as long as Rock Slide double connects, it does miss one, Porygon two. It'll pick up the KO onto the Evil. And, uh, see what Gorgon does? I mean, technically, he recovers. That's unfortunate that we missed them. This is actually going to be really annoying. So we're going to go for a Will-O-Wisp because I need to start getting um, some nice chunk damage off. And then Rock Slide. So we need to just start flinching him with Rock Slide. And the, the damage over time from Willowis is going to be very helpful. Because he's going to play this really annoying long I'm going to recover infinitely game with us. Check room. Sure. Alright, so, so it actually changes the game up here. Where we're now going for crunches and not for rock slides. And the reason is, he's now faster. So, he's going to just draw this out for so long. Uh, he's now faster, so the crunch has the chance to lower his defense. Which is more relevant because the flinch is no longer an option due to him now being faster. So, he's not tanky enough to survive this plus the burn damage every turn. But technically, he can just click recover for a bunch of turns in a row and just burn a lot of time. All right, he goes for an ice beam. If he freezes, he can win. He does not freeze, so that's going to be game. Get out of here with your Corrigan too, sir. But wait, there's more. If you like and subscribe now, we can ban evil on the stream located in the description below. Wow. Okay, GG's. Um, so that's four games, and I feel like that one was a little bit of time, right? So uh, we'll probably end here. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, in the description below will be a link to the Twitch. Will be a link to the Discord. Uh, all of the socials where we do shiny Pokemon giveaways on the stream, on Twitch, in the Discord, on the Twitter, etc., etc. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to slam that subscribe button, like the video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, what you think I can improve upon, what you think was good. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the Comfey team, and we'll be back next week with a new team. Uh, showcasing some new PvP Pokemon brought in thanks to the DLC. Peace.